We're studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 3, entitled The Lord's Pastimes Out of Vrindavan. We're on text four. It's August 14th, 2022. Damitva. Svayambare, Nagnijitim, Uvaha, Tat Bagnamanam, Api, Vidyata, Agyan, Jagne, Akshita, Shastra Brita, Svashastrai, Kakudmino Vida Nasoda Mitva, Svayambare Gnagna Jitimuvaha. Good <laughs> Shastra Brita Swasha Strike. Good Mino Vida Naso Damitva. Swayam Varek Nagna Jiti Muva. Swayam Tad Bhagnamana Napi Gridya Togyan Jagne Ksita Shastra Brita Swashastrai Kakud me no vida na so da mitva. Kakud me no vida na so da mitva. Swayam Tadbhagna mana na pigridya togyan. Jagne sata shastra vrita swashastra. Jagne sata shastra vrita swashastra. Anyone online like to recite the verse? Kakud me no vida na so da mi pao. Kakud me no vida na so da mi pao. Swayam bare nagna jiti muvaha. Swayam bare nagna jiti muvaha. Tabagna manam api gridya togyan. Tabagna manam api gridya togyan. Jagne Shata Shastra Brita Swashastra. Jagne Shata Shastra Brita Swashastra. So it's we're on Canto 3, Chapter 3, Text 4. Canto 3, Chapter 3, Text 4. Kakudmina. Kakudmina. Bulls whose noses were not pierced. Bulls whose 
Abida Nasa, pierced by the nose. Damitva, subduing. Svayambari, in the open competition to select the bridegroom. In the open competition to select the bridegroom. Nagnijatim, Princess Nagnijati. Uvaha, married. Tat Bhagnamanan. In that way, all who were disappointed. In that way, all who were disappointed. Api, even though. Vidyata, wanted. Agyan, the fools. Jagne, killed and wounded. Akshita, without being wounded. Shastra Brita, equipped with all weapons. Svashastrai, by his own weapons. Translation By subduing seven bulls whose noses were not pierced, the Lord achieved the hand of Princess Nagnajati in the open competition to select her bridegroom. Although the Lord was victorious, his competitors asked the hand of the princess, and thus there was a fight. Well equipped with weapons, the Lord killed or wounded all of them, but he was not hurt himself. So there's no purport to that verse. I'll read <coughs> text five, uh, Canto three, chapter. <sighs> I think for now it's okay. For now it's okay. I'll read text five. Priyam prabhur gramya eva priya bititsur chad jutarum yadarte vajriadrava tam sagano ushanda pida migo nu namayam patunam. Priyam of the dear wife, Prabhu, the Lord, Gramya, ordinary living being, Eva, in the manner of, Priyaya, just to please, Diditsu, wishing, Archat, brought about, Dutarum, the Parijata flower tree, Yat, for which, Arte, in the matter of, Vajri, Indra, the king of heaven, Adravatam, went forward to fight with him, Sagana, with full strength, Rusha in anger, Anda blind, Krita Mriga, uh, Krita Mriga, Mriga Henpecked, Nunam, of course, I am this Vadunam of the wise. Translation Just to please his dear wife, the Lord brought back the Parijata tree from heaven, just as an ordinary husband would do. But Indra, the king of heaven, induced by his wives, Henpecked as he was, ran after the Lord with full force to fight him. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The Lord once went to the heavenly planet to present an earring to Aditi, the mother of the demigods, and his wife, Satyabhama, also went with him. There is a special flowering tree called the Parijata, which grows only in the heavenly planets, and Satyabhama wanted this tree. Just to please his wife, like an ordinary husband, the Lord brought back the tree. <clears throat> and this enraged Bajri, or the controller of the thunderbolt. Indra's wives inspired him to run after the Lord to fight. And Indra, because he was a henpecked husband and also a fool, listened to them and dared to fight with Krishna. He was a fool on this occasion because he forgot that everything belongs to the Lord. There was no fault on the poor part of the Lord, even though he took away the tree from the heavenly kingdom. But because Indra was henpecked, dominated by his beautiful wives like Sachi, he became a fool, just as all persons who are dominated by their wives are generally foolish. Indra thought that Krishna was a henpecked husband who only by the will of his wife Satyabhama took away the property of heaven. And therefore he thought that Krishna could be punished. He forgot that the Lord is the proprietor of everything and cannot be henpecked. The Lord is fully independent, and by his will only, he can have hundreds and thousands of wives like Satyabhama. He was not, therefore, attached to Satyabhama because she was a beautiful wife, 
but he was pleased with her devotional service and thus wanted to reciprocate the unalloyed devotion of his devotee. Omoganatmi Randasya Gananjana Shalakaya Teksha and Militamyena Tasmai Sri Gurvena Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishdam Stapi Tamyena Bhutale Svayamupa Kadamayam Dadati Sva Padantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Tapadakamalam Sri Guru and Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Saganaraganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Saitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Sri Bishakan Vitamstra Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatte Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavane Shri Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Banchakalpa to you, Biascha, Creepus and Dubieva Cha, Patitanan, Pavanebio, Vaishmadebio, Namo Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Pabunichananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Sri Vasadi Gorabhata Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nevishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatari <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 3, Chapter 3, Texts 4 and 5. By sub subduing seven bulls whose noses were not pierced, the Lord achieved the hand of Princess Nagnajati in the open competition to select her bridegroom. Although the Lord was victorious, his competitors asked the hand of the princess and thus there was a fight. Well equipped with weapons, the Lord killed or wounded all of them, but he was not hurt himself. Just to please his dear wife, the Lord brought back the Parijata tree from heaven, just as an ordinary husband would do. <coughs> but Indra, the king of heaven, induced by his wives, henpecked as he was, ran after the Lord with full force to fight him. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we're continuing here with Uddhava's uh, descriptions to Vidura here in this part of the Bhagavatam. And so, yes, so uh, yesterday, Prampara Prabhu gave a class on the verse about Krishna and Rukmini <coughs> coming together. And, and so, uh, so here, these are more stories about Krishna and his various wives. Actually, it's described, and we'll, we'll hear here as we go on in this chapter, that Krishna, in his appearance about 5,200 years ago, he had uh, 16,108 wives. And there's like, there's eight of them that we hear specific stories about. And this Nagnajiti, also known as Satya, was one of those eight. Then the other 16,100, they, they kind of all came to Krishna at once in one pastime through the Bhamasura, the, the Bhamasura demon, also known as Narakasura. So that's a 16,108, pretty much all at once. And that's, and all of these, pastimes are described extensively in Krishna book. And then the eight that we, that came kind of in an individual way, uh, that's uh, like uh, Rukmini and Satyavama and Jambavati and, uh, and Mit, uh, Satya, Mitravinda, Bhadra, Lakshmana, and uh Kalindi, actually, in kind of like an incarnation of the Yamuna River. Kalindi is one of the wives of, of Krishna, like that. Okay, and it's described here that Indra, who was controlled by the modes of nature, he, uh, he was thinking that Krishna was an ordinary henpecked husband, but actually Krishna is not controlled by the modes of nature. And so everything from Krishna is pastime, means 
from choice, natasya karyam karinam chavijyate, that he, uh, he, uh, uh, he has nothing to do. He's not, there's no have to for Krishna and those who are fully surrendered to Krishna. That full, that full bhakti, that's the platform of full get to. Everything's from choice. We're not pulled, Armani, Nirdhati, Kintu, Javakti, Bhajan. We're not pulled by our karma and the gunas and like that. We're not pulled by the modes of nature subtly or grossly. So that, that's a thing. Bhakti is transcendental. Vasudevi, Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga, Projita. Jani Yashivayargyam, Gyanam Chad, Hetukam. Bhakti is transcendental to all other processes. So, um, so for the pure bhakti of Krishna and for Krishna, that's real freedom, right? So Krishna is choosing to please his dear wife in reciprocation, in reciprocation for her unalloyed loving devotion. So this is the transcendental platform, the spontaneous, spontaneous play of divine love of Krishna and his pure devotee. And on these particular past, well, okay, so Krishna, in all of Krishna's pastimes, so Krishna is the champion. Krishna is the hero. So whether he's with his cowherd boys and they're all, oh, I'll touch Krishna first, I'll touch Krishna first. Or when he's this little darling baby or toddler with Mother Yashoda and you know, trying to lift Maharaj Nanda's and the shoes and all the residents of Vrindavan. Or Krishna is the hero. He's the champion. And then he, whether it's the pastimes with the gopis or here a, a, attaining his wives, Krishna is the champion. Krishna is the hero. And then, uh, and then our nature, Jivara Svupoi Krishna Nishidas Krishna Rattata Shakti Beta Beta. Prakash, that we're servants of Krishna and we, we, uh, we dedicate ourselves voluntarily for Krishna to be the hero, Krishna to be the center, right? So of course, we, so then, then we're happy, then, then we're not, not just happy like, oh, I'm happy today, but like, then we experience the natural bliss of the soul, not just like happiness in an ordinary superfluous sense. So the problem with that is that I want to be the hero. I want to be the champion. So that's that's material consciousness. That's material life. Uh, so that in all spheres, yes, I want to be the center. I want to be the one who's praised and adored like that. And so, uh, so I'll set up different. We'll, we'll call them God God projects where I I try to be the center. Right. And so like, okay, so here it's about these kind of like romantic relations and Krishna's winning, like for, for each of the wives, he, he wins some contest and he, he, he shows great acts of chivalry and bravery and strength and like that. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. So in terms of like, romantic life, sexual life, that's, yeah, so that, uh, so, right, we've all experienced that when I, I, I'll be the center, I'll be the hero, I'll be the champion, then it always, it always turns out like, like a Disney movie, and it unfolds, unfolds in beautiful, poetic ways, uh, with rainbows and multicolored unicorns and 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 butterflies, we've all we've all in, in, invariably experienced that. <clears throat> Damianti showing some icon there, right? <laughs> yeah, we must be doing something wrong. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So from some 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 of the reactions, I'm getting like. Well, for me, it's not always turned out like a Disney movie. Not in every case. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Okay, so I stand corrected. So I stand corrected. Yeah, so, 
Yeah, yesterday, Crown Prague gave clip. <laughs> it, yeah, so so yesterday, and uh, hmm, yeah, Prom Prague was giving class kind of on these topics about the pastime with Krishna and Rukmini. And, um, you know, and, uh, right, uh, in, in part of the discussion, Malini, Malini referenced Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj, yeah, he was asked by his dad, Karanyakashipu, what's the best thing you learn? So he said, Tatsad Manye Suravarya Dehinam Sada Samudvigna Dhyam Asat Grahat Hikvatma Hikvatma Patam Griha Anda Kupam Vanam Gatoya Darim Ashrayeta. So Prabhupada Maharaj says the best thing I learned is that like yeah is that when we try to be the center of these romantic dramas, it becomes great, the dark well of material life. And just, I mean, it's maybe maybe not a, a metaphor we have experience with, but Prabhupada described like if someone's walking in a field and there could be a, a, a well, like maybe a deep well of 100 feet or 60 feet, but it's covered by grass. So we're just walking along and we don't see it and we fall in we're finished, we're finished, uh, maybe immediately, or we can be there, it's the middle of a field, no one around for miles, we can scream, we can shout, and and uh, maybe our, our bones are broken, it's a very pathetic situation, we can scream, shout, we'll just, we'll just die there. So Prahlad Maharaj is saying, that's, uh, that's family life. So he's saying, yeah, it's actually not Disney movie. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So. Um, I was thinking I was just very insulting. Yeah. Okay. You're, 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 you're thinking it was just you. Yeah. yeah. No, no. But actually, actually, actually Plaid Maharaj is saying everyone's, everyone who's not giving themselves fully to Krishna. This is what they're experiencing. Yeah. Um, no, but next time it'll be better. Um, yeah, but then, <laughs> but then Prahlad Maharaj, he, he goes on to say, as, as the, the pastime goes on, because then at one point, and it's a whole pastime between Prahlad Maharaj and his father, Rani Kashipu. So Rani Kashipu, at, at, at another point, he said, okay, now what's the best thing you've learned? Now that you've been trained, you know, more intelligently. And Prahlad Maharaj says, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smarinam Padasevanam, Bandanam Archanam, Bandanam Dasyam, Sakyam Atmani Vedanam, Iti Pushpar Pitaha Vishnu Bhaktis Chenna Lakshana, Bhagavat, Bhagavat, Krieta Yada, Krieta Bhagavat Yada, Tanman Ye, Titamutam. Prahlad Maharaj says, Yeah, you're the most intelligent people. They're engaged in hearing about Krishna and chanting about Krishna and worshiping Krishna. So that's not what Hiranyakashipu wanted to hear. It's certainly not from his son. So at that point, Hiranyakashipu, he got really angry and enraged at the teachers. He said, ah, you're spies, you're traitors. Look, you're teaching my son all this bhakti yoga and love of God stuff. And so he was infuriated at the teachers, Sanda and Amarka were their names. And, and Hiranya, but then they, they can, they, they said, wait, wait, no, you are accusing us falsely. We didn't teach any of this stuff. We taught like, we taught manipulative diplomacy, all the good stuff. And <clears throat> we, we, we taught all the, we, we, yeah, we, we like, like that. <clears throat> So then he, he, he was convinced and then he turned to Prahlad. That's when he started getting like physically violent like that. You know. so, so at some point, so Prahlad, just so peaceful and strong and, 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 and Prahlad says, Matirna Krishna parita svatova mitopi padyeta grihavratanam adantagopir vishitam tamisram puna punashtavita charvananam. So Prahlad addresses this idea that no, it'll just be better next time. It'll just be better next time. The next romantic interlude, that'll be, 
that'll be like so unicorns and butterflies. So, so Pallad says, no, it's, it's puna punas chavita chavan. He says like chewing the chew. Like we can imagine, like, let's say we're five days with the same piece of gum. It's the same stuff. Yeah, well, I, don't, don't, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just quoting Prahlad Maharaj here. Okay, so, so he says, he said, no, it's just, it's just the same stuff. And we're leading ourselves and others to Adantagobir Vishatam, to, to the darkest region of it, the darkest hell, hellish region of existence with this chewing, just the same stuff, slightly different form, and it just gets more and more stale. <clears throat> yes, Jim is, finds that to be an appealing example, five days of the same gum. Yes, I'm trying to have an impact here. Nate vidus fartakatim hi vishnum durashayaye bahir artamanina and ayatande upaniyamana te pisha tantram u damni bada. So Prahlad Maharaj, he said, it, it, again, it gets like, it, it's like the blindly, but everyone's doing it. Haven't you, haven't you watched TV? Recently, this is what we're supposed to do. This is what we're supposed to do. So Prahlad Maharaj is like, well, the example of the lemmings. Of course, I understand that lemmings don't necessarily do that, but Disney, for a Disney movie, push them off the cliff, whatever. But yeah, anyhow, but the, no, it's, this is like the blind leading the blind. No, no, let's get like real teachers who are, who are free from the modes of nature, not, not, not this blind leading the blind stuff. So Pilar Marais, he said, Yan ma, yan ma to na degree, a maidi sukam he tucha. So Pilar Marais says, in this whole romance, material romance sex stuff, it's so insignificant and petty. Um, kandu yananam, kandu yananam, karayo iva duka dukam. He compares it to like an itch, like an itch. Tripyanti neha kripana bahu duka paja. Kandu tinam, kandu tinam manisi jam vishahiti dira. And Pilar Maharaj says, so he recommends. Tolerate the itch, just like an itch we scratch and it, be, it, it feels better. It, like, it feels better for a few seconds, but then it becomes inflamed and becomes infected. So he says he's, comp he's comparing this kind of like the, the whole sex urge to like an itch. And he's encouraging, tolerate, don't, don't, don't just scratch. Tolerate the itch and give, give yourselves to this Krishna consciousness process. So... Right, so the idea of the frustration of attempts at material sensual enjoyment, the idea of the frustration is not just to like suffer, the idea is like, there's a message here. There's, there's a message here. Let, yeah, let me, yehi sam sparsha jam boga, duki yonai evate, jantavanta kwante, nate shumamate buddha. Let me turn to that pleasure, that happiness that's not just the superficial pleasure that's not just temporary gratification. When we turn to that, to that, the bliss of the self, that happiness that's not dependent on the fluctuations of the material energy. She likes me. He's making eyes at me. Oh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm sad. It's too hot. It's perfect weather. It's, it's just, just like, no, let, let me give my life. Let me give my life. So like this Krishna consciousness, it's not about what there's no happiness. There's no, this is about the real part, the real fun. Ever increasing the actual happiness of the soul alive to itself in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God. And that's, that's a joy that can never be crushed by time, not in an hour, not in a day, not by any pandemic, not by any... He doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> She's rejected me. Just it, it's a joy that's ever increasing and full of variety and like that. So um, yeah, yeah. So, so the frustration is meant to mercifully. It's not forcing us because we can continue to act foolishly against our best interest. But the frustration it's it's meant to turn us to. Uh, yeah, let me. 
let me use my intelligence to go for the real, the real happiness. Let me really be intelligent, not just follow like lemmings. Mm. So, so we Rishabhadev, switching to the fifth canto of Bhagavatam from the seventh canto. King Rishabhadev says to his sons headed by Bharat Maharaj, Mahat Sevam Drama Horavi Muktes, Tamod Varam Yositam, Yositam, Tamod Varam Yositam, Sangi Sangam. So Shabadev is going to look, look, at each moment, there's like two, two essential directions. We can choose the true, we can serve the truly great souls who are, um, who are not interested, because Prahlad Maharaj says, yeah, like material life means scratching that itch is just like, that's the greatest thing. Scratching that itch is the greatest thing. And so Shabadev says, let's, let's find out those souls who realize just the, the petty, paltry, uh, shallow, hollow nature of the pleasure that comes from scratching that itch. And let's serve those souls who are, who are dedicated to that ever increasing bliss of the soul. Or we can serve those who are dedicated to Yoshitam. Sometimes Yoshitam is translated as woman, but Prabhupada makes it clear, like, okay, like for woman, Yoshitam means man, right? You know, sometimes to give the general idea, it talks about like, you know, seeking happiness through enjoying women and, and Prabhupada makes it clear. And for woman, it means man. So wh whatever we find our material happiness, uh, whatever we find our material happiness, the, you know, again, that's like the door to the deepest, darkest suffering of ignorance. If we pursue that, if we pursue that recklessly, so, so, it's, so yeah, so this whole philosophy and not just a philosophy, a practice, it's, it's very pessimistic about like true happiness in any sort of material life and very, very optimistic, 100% optimistic about bliss and happiness and peace and fulfillment in an ever increasing way, way through giving us, through, through, through using this body and using it for the process of bhakti. And so like, you might say there's the negative and the positive, because if it's just the negative, then, then it can be like, oh yeah, yeah. I've experienced that frustration of, uh, of uh, attempts at like romantic life, sex life. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, so I guess, uh, I, I guess now I just want God. And that's what Krishna says, Chattura Vida Bajante Mam, Jana Sukuti Norji, Atoji Gyasa Artiti Gani Chabaradarshaba. Krishna says, some people approach me because they want money. Some people want relief from the stress, relief from sickness. Some people are just curious. Some people post me, which approach me as pure devotion. But Krishna says, for whatever reason, even if it's a materialistic reason, it's purifying. These are, these are, um, these are praiseworthy souls. But, uh, but the idea, if we're, if we're just approaching out of frustration, then in one sense, my essential message is, yeah, I don't want this material attraction and I don't want this Disney stuff anymore unless something more attractive comes along, right? Like until, <laughs> until, until the next one, and oh, this one, this one is super, super special. This is different sort of thing. And then it's just like, this, I, I, this, more, this is mystical, <laughs> it's mystical. You're right, so then, um, so, then, um, so then it's just like, okay, so you were chanting 16 rounds per day and following principles. Oh no, but I met her. No, but now I found that like that. So then it, it all goes into forgetfulness. Still, any connection with this process of bhakti is purified. And, and we're, you know, I, I, speaking for myself, we're all on maybe some, hopefully some form of upward spiral, upward spiral where we, we get the futility of material sense gratification at a deeper and deeper level, you know, each turn of the spiral. And, and again, not just, oh, futility, this is so pessimistic. <laughs> And Vishya Vinivartate, Nirahavasi Dei, Namrasu Vardhamasopias, and Param Justa Nivartate. 
and we're, we're getting that higher taste of spiritual life of genuine Krishna consciousness and that higher taste moves us that and this is why because it's one thing like well I I'm emotionally attracted that's nice to Krishna consciousness T to be philosophically deep this is important because the nature of Maya is to present attractions this one's more attractive than ever attractions and to can to try to convince us this will this this is what's it called yeah that this this bling uh this is really oh it, look how it shines and jangles mm -hmm. and, yeah it's, it's, it was a term from the 90s or so yeah the things <laughs> things that are shiny and and like that <clears throat> a, a client recently used it in a letter to me so I was in my mind, yeah, look, look, look at the bling here, look how like that. And so, and so, you know, you know, we're in material bodies, we're going to be attracted. We're going to be attracted, we're going to be repulsed. So that's where I like to have a deep philosophical intelligence is so important. So just like, yeah, my mind's attracted, my material ego is attracted. And with higher intelligence, let me, uh, let me use this as an opportunity to take deeper shelter in transcendental vibration. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah, okay. So that, that's that's where intelligence comes in. That's where that's where I think philosophy is important. I mean, Prashad's important, Kirtan's important, and, 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 and the, for sure. It, it all parts of the process. At the same time, you know, Maya is like tricky, clever, you know, super tricky, super clever. So it, it's like, I would say it helps, but it's practically essential to be like philosophically deep and strong in order to understand what's really going on when Maya is trying to attract me. So I don't just, I just, I, I just foolishly go for it for another cycle of five years, five years in the loop. And then five years later, oh, I got fooled again. Oh, okay. Like, like that. So just like, okay, like in material, material activities, material romance, we, we get like intensely into it. So to actually, to actually in a steady, long-term enduring way, to not, you know, to not be dragged here and there by the nose, like these bulls being described, to, to not be dragged here and there requires that work because here's, there's no, void in the universe there's no void in the universe so our nature is to be intense and if we're not intense about getting the higher taste through serving krishna through the pure devotee such as srila Prabhupada, if we're not like really intense tivrena the word tivrena means intense it's like 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 the sun rays through a through the through through the lens of a magnifying glass and the intensity starts burning the paper. Tivrena means like the intensity of a sun ray, you know, like if we're not really intense about bhakti yoga, we're just sort of like casual, like, oh um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm sauntering along. This is nice, kind of sort of, yeah, let's do some kirtan. And that's good. Like same, but if we're not intense we will be dragged away by material desires. It does, it does and, and we'll get intensely absorbed in them and we'll experience another round of pleasure and distress on the material platform. So yeah, there's no void in the universe. And uh, there's something, yeah. And um, so we quoted this verse yesterday as part of the discussion. It's Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, text 14. Krishna says, uh, the appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course, um, like the winter and summer seasons, they're like the winter and summer seasons, means they come and go. When we should tolerate them without being disturbed, meaning materially on all levels on all levels, whether it's uh, attraction to someone or rejection from someone, or it's hot, cold, um, all, all the senses, the tongue, the skin, the eyes, there's going to be attraction. There's going to be happiness and distress, the mind. 
And so the idea is like this, as Kram Pra was emphasizing yesterday, you were emphasizing Malini in the discussion, to not make that the goal, to not make Bhukti Mukti, Buk, Buk, to not make Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami mm, uh, the goal. Uh, but the, the, the goal is to cultivate to cultivate my real bliss, my eternal life. So there's going to be happiness and distress. Let me not get carried away when it's so nice. Uh, again, whether it's uh, the weather or the house I live in or romance or discouraged and depleted and crushed. If it's not so nice, whether financially you are in relationships or whatever, that's going to come. That's part of material life. So let me be yami navya tiyante te pusham pusharshaba samadukha sukham dira sumitat vaya kapate. And Krishna says, so one who's steady in the face of the sukha and the dukkha, the happiness and distress, uh, that's, then we're like Krishna. We're not Krishna, or then we're like Krishna. We're steady in devotional service, then just like Krishna's not a henpecked husband, he's choosing to please his wife. Indra is affected by the modes of material nature, he's a henpecked husband. And uh, so then we're like Krishna when we're steady and happy, in, you know, the modes, happiness, distress, or somewhere in between. You know, I'm doing service with intensity. And again, without that intensity, we're going to be dragged by the material energy. And the nature of the material energy is when we're being dragged by it. We don't know we're being dragged by it. That's the nature of material energy. We think on, we're some, on some high mystical spiritual platform. How dare you say it's material like that? At the same time, that's where, again, that's where philosophy comes in. That's where intelligence comes in. Because, like, I know if I'm, if I'm paying attention when I read Prabhupada's books, when I hear Prabhupada's lecture, when I'm alive and participating in Bhagavatam discussion, Bhagavad Gita discussion, then it helps me to see where I'm at, honestly. And like, and with, without the self deception, that's natural for material life. Um, yeah, with, with intense, intensity. In this, I'm thinking, like, yeah, it was my. Two or three months ago, I read a book by Saint Teresa of Avila, and that's the and you know, that's the idea of the 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 Catholic nuns. The idea of the Catholic nuns is that they're they're marrying Jesus. That, that, that's the idea. They're, they're, so it's not that everyone needs to be a nun or a monk, but in one sense, in other words, like it doesn't need to take the form of a nun or a monk. Krishna says in the first verse of sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Real sannyas is one who's given up the enjoying spirit. So someone can be in married life with children. Someone might be wearing the habit of a nun or the dhoti and court and shaved head. It's, it's not essentially, or saffron robes, but it's like, so that's real renunciation. That, okay, according to my dharma, my purpose, I might be in this ashram, this life situation. Um, let, 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 me, let me cultivate the art and science of how to, give up the enjoying spirit and use everything, whether it's money, whether it's this mind, this body, this voice, this computer, these resources, let me use it. Uh, let me use it for Krishna. And that's, that's a principle in the purport here that uh, Indra was a fool on this occasion. I mean, Indra is a great devotee. It's just like, it's kind of like poor Indra, like percentage wise, so many of his pastimes, he's like, he comes off. It's ridiculous ridiculous on a good day no yeah because sometimes sometimes he looks like 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 evil like i mean he's trying to murder all the residents of Vrindavan. Yeah, right that's, so that's that's not just ridiculous but anyhow on this occasion he was a fool because he forgot that everything belongs to krishna so krishna is not being a thief if he's taking a parijata flower for satyabhama everything belongs to krishna so to cultivate that mentality yeah yeah, so this, these relationships, whatever sort of relate, whether it's a parent, child, friendship, romantic. Okay, how, and it's not a whimsical thing. Yeah, I mean, just use it for creation. It's not just like a cliche. There's a, there's a rigorous science and art. How to use everything in Krishna's service. Mm. All right, I'll read the verses again, and I'm glad to hear any comments, questions, realizations. <laughs> Akud me no vida na soda meat fast, fayam vare nagna jiti muvaha, tabagna manana pi gita ganja nakes at the shastra britas, fashastra. 
by subduing seven bulls whose noses were not pierced. The Lord achieved the hand of Princess Najmajiti in the open competition to select her bridegroom. Although the Lord was victorious, his competitors asked the hand of the princess, and thus there was a fight. Well equipped with, we well equipped with weapons, the Lord killed or wounded all of them, but he was not hurt himself. Priyam prabhur gramya eva priyaya didi sur archad dutarum yadarte vajyadravatam sagano vushanda kidam ego dunamayam vadunam. Just to please his dear wife, the Lord brought back the Parijata tree from heaven, just as an ordinary husband would do. But Indra, the king of heaven, induced by his wives, henpecked as he was, ran after the Lord with full force to fight him. Hare Krishna, thanks for listening. I welcome any comments or questions at this time. I have a short question and then I'll which one. According to your inspiration. The short one is, um, could you define henpecked? It's a word, I don't know what it means. Henpecked? <laughs> can you tell me to okay. okay, yeah, it's, a, it's an English word. And uh, so it means, it generally refers, you know, refers to a, a husband who kind of out of like, practically out of fear of his wife, will be like, yes, dear, yes, dear. And like his, his life is controlled in that way. We can so so just like there's there's the hen and the rooster. Yeah. Right? Actually, on my Japa walk, I I go past a house with lots yeah. of hens and roosters. So I think the idea is like so the rooster is the male, but you might have scenes where the hen is pecking. You know, like oh, you know, like with pecking with it. And then the rooster is like the yeah. The okay. Is yeah. Yeah. Stop nagging. Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. Sure. I just like that. So that's what it means. <laughs> Malini's laughing. Okay. Okay. Is there no, is there is there no let me question? see. Let me see. I have a question, but it's kind of a comment, but okay. I can wait. I want to hear your question. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you spoke a lot about happiness. Yeah. And we want happiness. We swear we want happiness. We swear the camera went down. Oh. Um, like happiness this way but like what i noticed before i was a devotee yeah. is that most people don't go for the things they know all the things that will give them happiness yeah you know they don't go like, for it. Yeah. yeah i remember in my environment you know it was re reduced to my environment but yeah. every environment is just different sure. goal but people don't go for them. So yeah. in my environment, it's like so many people were speaking about traveling the world. Yeah. And I heard that from the time I was 11 years old or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, I will travel the world. I will travel the world. And most people didn't do it. They wouldn't actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, oh, I will, uh, I will start a business. Or, oh, I will uh, have a big house or whatever. And they I, just work for I, that company that they don't a care. lot of people they don't even go for what they think will give yeah. them happiness and the reason is from what i understand is fear yeah like not wanting to take a risk because in fact what's most important is not happiness is comfort and security or the illusion of security the illusion of comfort yeah. and security but sure. but it seems that it's even um stronger than the happiness Okay. aspect sure. where people kind of hold on to comfort and security even though they may know that okay if you take a risk then you will go for you know take the risk to travel sure. take the risk to you know whatever you know approach that person no, take the risk yeah and uh you know people sometimes prefer to kill themselves than taking the risk True. to uh, to go for what they want and I'm seeing also in spiritual, when I say spiritual is in devotional service, yeah. the same is true. Mm. That I see a lot of people, a lot of devotees who have the spiritual desire. Oh, I like to do that for Krishna. Or I like to do that yeah. for, and that will really make, make me happy or satisfied. And it will be really pleasing to Srila Prabhupada, I know. It will be really pleasing to Krishna. 
But then what really ran over and rule over is the same thing, is yeah. like the desire for comfort and security. Yeah. So I, I like to hear because, you know, it's so much is about happiness, 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 but really very few people go for their own happiness or yeah. the happiness of the spiritual master. Sure. You know? And I'm reading uh, some biography, like a series of short biography of disciple of Shia Prabhupada. I could really see they were going for Shia mm. Prabhupada happiness. Yeah. You know, they were starving themselves. They were like last night I was reading about Mother Hari Puja, who live in this community. Yeah, yeah. And she was 20 years old or 21 year old with a newborn. Uh. And to please Shia Prabhupada, she went to Poland and they were in some kind of huge hostel. In the middle of the winter, there was no heat. Huh. And the only food they could find is potatoes and cabbage. Right. And she, no, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway. But, but she knew it was pleasing to Shila Prabhupada. Yeah. So there was no like concern for comfort or security. Mm. So, um, and again and again, all those testimonials are there where I see that they are not, they are attached to have their happiness by making Shia Prabhupada happy. Yeah. And the comfort and security is completely absent. Yeah. And it seems that he gives such a fulfilling life, you yeah. know, materially and spiritually in a sense. So if you could, you know, speak about that aspect, because it doesn't, Prabhupada speak a lot about happiness, but that's, I think, what's in the way. Hi, right, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Okay, thanks for sharing, Melanie. Hi, right, Krishna. Yeah, okay. So, uh, well, I like Bhagavad Gita describes happiness in different modes happiness and tamas and rajas and sattva, and then there's transcendental happiness. And then, yeah, Prahlad Maharaj is talking about going for the transcendental happiness. So, I, I guess the way I would understand it, Malini, is like, and it points a lot, like, in, you know, many of you have been through the Safetov seminars and we talk about stretches and getting out of comfort zone and, you know, things like that. And so, <clears throat> so like those who are controlled by, you know, like, like say security needs, security need, instead of doing what I know would really make me happy. I, I, I see it that in such circumstances, you know, it might be like, I'm 30 or 40% convinced if I really did that, it would make me happy if I really started my own business instead of working for this organization, or if I really traveled around the world. But, but you know, so the soul's always seeking happiness. And so what you're describing, Molly, I was like, it might be a, it's a form of seeking happiness in the mode of ignorance, I meaning controlled by fear. So sure, I'm 40% convinced if I traveled around the world or started that project or wrote that book or whatever. <clears throat> but actually I'm 60%, actually I'll be, no, but, but actually if I try for that, then I, I don't have my salary and my entrepreneurship might fail. So I might end up as a, as a homeless bum on the street and then I'll be really unhappy. And I'm 60% sure that that'll probably be what it'll turn out with. Or yeah, but then if I just travel for years then I won't, what about my pension plan? So actually, I'll, I'll be more happy uh, just keeping the secure thing. And maybe there's 40% of me that is like, no, go for it, go for it. But it's not 51% yet. So it's like, it's a form, the security, living out of illusion of security and need and fear, come, come, you know, a, a miserable comfort zone. It's like a sort of, I'm going for happiness in the mode of ignorance. I see. Yeah, I appreciate like you, you reframe it for like, okay, it also looking for happiness, but yeah, like in a couch. Yeah, yeah. As, a, as a couch, as a couch potato. <laughs> as a couch. As a couch potato. potato. Yeah. Right. And what about when it comes to devotional service? Devotional service, yeah. Well, then, you know, we can get into our, uh, our stuck comfort zones. And then, and then I might be doing some devotional service, but some is just like as this comfortable comfort zone and like that, right? Because Prabhupada says Krishna consciousness 
it's a thrill at every moment. It's never hackneyed. It's never stagnant. It's never, yeah, it's never stereotyped. He uses these terms. It's a thrill at every moment. So if I'm not experiencing that, I might not be stretching myself enough. I'm not might. I, I can speak personally. Like, you know, I got, I got my comfort zone and now I do that. And, it's, and I appreciate the life like that. At the same time, like, like, come on, come on. Like, sure, you can get by with this level of sleeping and eating, but, um, but I, I, I know I'd be more fulfilled. I 49% know I'd be, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be more fulfilled if I was stretching myself and taking risks on behalf of Prabhupada and being more, more bold and joyfully adventurous. And, 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 and I know what that would look like, you know, for me. And so, so basically it's, it's, it's the mode, it's the modes of ignorance coming in within the context of a devotional life, same principle. Yeah, I was seeking material happiness really. It's, you know, like it's seeking material comfort and security is seeking material happiness. Yeah. In a lot of ignorance. Yeah, yeah. Com comfortable life. Pra Prabhupada talks about well, many of his god brothers, Gaudiya Mat, or it's like I said, they're, they're satisfied, they're satisfied to, to ring bells. Oh God! Like, okay, I'm in the temple and I do the deity, and we're not we're not, of course, deprecating deity worship. Yeah, do yeah, do worship is, but it is, okay, I do my deity worship, and then enough enough people will come this month and put 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 a few rupees yeah. in the thing. So I and I have my room, I have my room, and I ring some bells, and Papa just like they're satisfied to ring bells. Like this is not bhakti stuff, <laughs> right? <clears throat> <clears throat> Garuda Prabhu. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, thank you for the class. My my question or comment actually is connected to what we were just speaking about. Um, yeah, I was thinking about um, like my own experience, you know, in my life, like without any kind of uh, structure or like uh, spiritual practice or religious you know, process to give myself to, like what my life looked like beforehand and then what my life, you know, looked like. And then seeing like, you know, just how a lot of people are drawn to religions for that like yeah. comfort and security. Yeah. You know, just like, and even this philosophy gives concepts like karma or, you know, 100% responsibility paradigm. Yeah. And how uh, one's life could change, like through giving themselves to just those two paradigms, yeah, you know, yeah. and 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 how it could change into like a, a life of like more comfort and more secure. Yeah, true. You know, because there's yeah. you know uh, some sort of structure to give yourself to, and yeah, you know, I could see for myself like I was trying to like, you know create a life that that i was um with less suffering sure and this yeah. process was giving that to me yeah and it still does yeah. at the same time like suffering's still coming so it's not like oh now suffering's ending you know so being in material consciousness i i go into like suffering you know it's yeah. like i'm suffering yeah. but if i was steady in my spiritual consciousness i could see that it, it's it's all to help guide me you know closer to krishna yeah it's not necessarily mm -hmm. suffering so so yeah i was just kind of like thinking about that and thinking about like yeah it's like you know i could easily go into like well i have my chanting practice i read i come to the programs here like this well, is, you're good but you're good. I, yeah i'm good you know, and, and like, okay, <laughs> you know, at the same time, like, you know, Srila Prabhupada, that wasn't really his mood to no, just like, you know, take yeah. on this practice and just sit in your own little world right. or your community and just be happy together. Right. And, but I, I see how, you know, I'm not just talking about bhakti yoga or Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Most religions are that way. They were that right? way, yeah. And spiritual practice is that way. And, and it is good. Yeah, it is good. Prabhupada is pleased with that. Yeah, at the same time, like I can see, like my life has changed a lot. Just, I mean, not that I'm rigorously going out yeah. distributing books and doing 
same period of time, you know. But I've, I've started taking those steps and I can see how there's like, there's been a lot of like movement where I feel like um, I, it, it's just like, there's this overall, like, even though it's been stretchy and yeah. uncomfortable and, you know, really hard at the same time, like there's joy in it, like joy, yeah. joy that like, it's like a different kind of joy. It's, it's, um, it's a, a different quality. Different yeah. Quality. And I'm, and really noticing that, like, um, uh, and I'm appreciating that. And I feel like it's more of like Shiro Prabhupada's move, uh, mood, you know, I mean, I can see when his movement first started, I mean, their devotees just like, sure. Prabhupada told me to go here. I'm going to just like the example that you share, you know, sure. Prabhupada's just like, you know, it's just goes over there, start a temple, go over and these are devotees that they didn't know anything about Krishna consciousness. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were, they were, yeah. they were like nine years junior to you. Yeah, yeah. Like I probably know more than they yeah, did at that true. time. You know, it's just true. like it's mine. It just kind of blows my mind how like you know individuals were just like these spirit souls were just like giving them giving themselves to just you know whatever Shri Prabhupada wanted. I'm like. I don't know, just kind of like in that kind of question, you know, in my life, because I I can see how easily I could get to where, you know, I'm just comfortable and secure and life's good. Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, I guess I just wanted to share, you know, kind of my process and just, you know, looking at like, you know, is it is it even possible to approach, you know, this process in a pure devotional mood? without like some material motive in the beginning like is that like i mean is it isn't it just like common like that everybody is approaching a practice like with some sort of material motive in the beginning like is it you know and then as time progresses they you know develop the pure devotion eventually hopefully you know at least a smidgen of it in their lifetime <laughs> <laughs> at least that's what i'm hoping for myself like because i feel like my you know kind of you know i damianti presented the five uh motivations i can't remember uh one was karma um mukti liberation yeah. Yani. mystic powers Yani. 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 Yeah. yogis yeah yesterday and i was just connecting to car karmi i mean yeah i'm karma yoga you know it's, that's my, <laughs> you know, I want, I wanted a result of, you know, taking on this practice to, you know, I was looking for like more stability and, you know, security and, you know, some sort of comfort, <laughs> you know, but anyway, so I guess I, that's all I have to share. Um, Thank you, Guru Prabhu. I much appreciate your sharing. Yeah, and you're saying it yeah, touches on such a big aspect of this discussion, which I really didn't touch on in the class. It's the progression, Dharma Artha Kama Moksha, Dharma Artha Kama Moksha. So if one does like, well, yeah, I want the sense gratification, enjoyment, I'm going to do it through a truly religious life and, and, and sattvic life. Then, then the quality of happiness is nicer, more heavenly, than if we're trying to do it through irregulated, whimsical tamas and rajas. And it's described in Bhagavad Gita and then that sattvic religious life. And then one can get conditioned to, I do have like a superior quality of peace and happiness compared to others. And uh, yes, and um, yeah, yes, yes. And, uh, and then the idea is like, but then, then at some point, maybe after a few years or decades or lifetimes, some realization of this isn't really satisfying for me, the soul. So I want liberation. But then liberation, if it doesn't have the personal bhakti aspect, that's not sad, that we're not active. We're not personally active. So we come back. So yeah, so bhakti. So it's generally, yeah, we want we want some material sense gratification or relief from suffering. So we come to some spirit, true spiritual process and it's not pure devotion, but by engaging in the process, we become purified.
Is it that when we practice devotional life on that level, does it become Dharma? You know, Dharma Arta, Kama Moksha is like, okay, well, that kind of devotional service is going to lead us to economic development and sense gratification and liberation. And it's no more anymore like the process of Bhakti Yoga. You see what I mean? It depends on our consciousness. To, to to what extent are we doing it for higher level economic development and sense gratification and to be a good person in the eyes of society and to the extent that for the most part yeah and, and to the extent that our motivation and consciousness more and more is i want to please the pure devotee i want to please krishna then it's then it's transcendental to material dharma I see there's a, a just a few hands up online. Um, Stephanie, you had your hand up. Uh, okay, I see An Anasuya, you have your hand up. Hi, Krishna. Yes, I do. <laughs> so I had a couple things. Um, one, I wanted to share that when you expressed about being henpecked. <laughs> yeah, henpecked me. Like I could see myself in that, like when um, uh, my my natural tendency <laughs> is to henpeck somebody. So I'm looking at that. So like, that was kind of cool. Um, you, could, and, you could see your propensity to be a hen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, I was laughing at that. And uh, then when, Garuda was sharing, I, I was uh, thinking of my recent decision to join uh, the holistic um, journey of self-care, yeah. and it gave me a new understanding of what um, my intention is by taking that course, and that is to really reconnect with my true self, like my inner self, and so like really going... Um, like, I really feel like this is in preparation. Like, I, I like where we're going with this discussion today and um, feeling more enlivened to take the course. And I'm, I'm doing a plug because I know some are considering the course. So um, I just wanted to put it out there that I'm taking it and that I'm looking forward to the journey. All right, Krishna. Thanks for sharing, Anasuya. So to take this uh, self-care course through the past hour, you've come to like, like a, a, a fuller inspiration to, to, to take it, to, take it to, 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 to enhance your self-realization in bhakti and not so much intrinsically for, for physical health or that sort of thing. Oh, that yeah, might I be, like, that might yeah, be. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I made that. <laughs> I, okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear how you're moved by this discussion. Thank you, Anasuya. I, I have one more comment. Yes. <clears throat> um, yeah, in, in relating to d direct preaching that I've been starting to do. Yeah. It's and I, I wanted to share one point about it. Like what I've noticed it, is that it's been helping me like like the as far as like happiness and distress in my material family life experience i feel like it's it pulls me out of like focusing on happiness and distress yeah of that yeah, nice. and that's what i'm noticing as yeah. far as the joy that i that i expressed that i that i mentioned it's because i'm, I'm not so like focused on like oh is, is our game not going good is this is right, it, right. or is it going bad and what can we do about it? you know it's like and just that whole like you know that whole paradigm of yeah. Getting, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so easily gets caught up in when you're in family life because all those different members and you know yeah. all the elements that have to do with it and yeah so that's what i'm i'm really feeling like it's really supportive i I, mean, I don't know what it's like being single you know i would imagine maybe it's the same thing but you know just that's what's supporting me is like getting stepping out of that like yeah 
you know, that's, focus. That's what's important. Yeah. The happiness stress is there, you're attending to it, responsibly experiencing it. And at the same time, it's just like, it's just like less and less significant. Yeah. And, and as, as you're going out and sharing, increase the consciousness more and more. Yeah. Well, I think it might be helpful too, like, you know, to see people like really like struggling, you know, when we went out, oh. there was, you know, just people laying on the street, you know, yeah. just intoxicated and just like, you know. Terrible condition. It gives a perspective. Yeah. Such a, you know, they're in such a challenging place and, you know, it's like my happiness and distress that I'm like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's like I know what it's like being there. I've been where those yeah. individuals are, you know, and I feel fortunate that, you know, my karma or whatever, my, I took responsibility and brought myself out of that place. But yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's an element too, that probably is, you know, helping me like, you know, have some yeah. perspective on like, okay, really do am I really experiencing distress and happiness? You're saying how much intensity of distress and pain yeah. is, is out there. Yeah. But, you know, and then preaching directly, I just, I just feel like it's like really, it creates such, so much, I don't know, I'm experiencing so much movement and change mm -hmm. like in me. Um, and I'm, I, yeah and i'm not <laughs> i'm excited to go out again but i'm also like i'm gonna go get really uncomfortable again <laughs> i don't know if it ever stops being that way do you feel it, it seems like you're just like hey I'm <laughs> when i'm out i'm yeah. out to go out <laughs> so it's, it's patient when i'm out i'm out yeah anyway hi krishna <laughs> I'm, I'm moved by how you're moved Guru. <laughs> I, I just um, that that move that um, well move yeah and movement movement yeah that's what it is you know like it's Srila Prabhupada's movement it's Lord Chaitanya's movement mm. and if we stay stagnant in the movement we miss out the movement mm. and the movement is connected with the mission of the spiritual master yeah so if we lose track of the mission we lose track of the mission then. In a sense, we are not in the movement of Lord Chaitanya. Mm. And, and it doesn't mean that being in a mission means like I go out and distribute book like we did those all day together. Mm. But it means like a consciousness, a missionary consciousness that helps us to stay alive in a movement. And if we are not alive in a the movement, then spiritual life becomes stagnant and stale. And it's, you know, like the other day I was at the temple and it's nothing to do with the temple of devotees there, but it was so painful, mm -hmm. so, so painful. Like it's like four days of the, of the year, there is a festival called Jula and Yatra, where the Chota and Krishna are taken and now they're taken outside under a tree on the swing. Mm -hmm. And so there was a Prabhu leading Kirtan, and maybe five or six Prabhu around that Prabhu kind of responding to the Kirtan. And then on a, on, on a woman's side, maybe five or six women responding to the Kirtan. Mm. And there was probably 100 people there. Oh. Mm. And the rest of people, they were in their social, comfortable, what's that about, mm. like mood. Of course, it swings the deities, it comes to yeah. the deities of the flower and all that. But there was no sense of, it was stagnant, mm. it was stale. That's my experience. I experienced staleness and stagnation. And I experienced so much sadness, mm. like, like I needed to go focus on the kirtan, which should have been the center, in order to take out all the noise of the chatting and social life and blah, 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 blah you know, mm. all that. And uh, I felt, yeah, like I felt sad for how much the devotees are missing out on, on the movement. On the intensity on of the, the movement. On the intensity of, of the movement, the enthusiasm and all that. It was, it was really a sad experience, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to share. All right. Thank you.
Okay. Well, thank you all for your attention to Srimad Bhagavatam and Transcendental Vibration of Bhakti Yoga. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. 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 Thank you. Jai. 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 Jai.